There were many things in the outback that, have, uh, that could have killed Robin. And every time I left her, I was always worried that I would never see her again. Uh, one of the dangers was that the local farmers uh, in one part of her journey would actually drop meat out of airplanes where they'd injected poison, strychnine poison, into the meat to kill local dingoes. And this was a danger to her dog, Diggity, uh, who was scampering around running you know, 40 miles a day while she was walking 20 miles a day. I'm going to tell you about some of the other dangers that she faced, and it's, it's actually a miracle that you made it all the way uh, out to the other side of Australia. One of the biggest dangers that Robin faced during the trip was that there were herds of feral camels, wild camels, there's about 50,000 of them wandering the outback. They were brought into Australia in the early 1900s to open up the outback, and when they were done building these paths, uh, through, the, through the desert, uh, they were let loose thinking they would die, but in fact they've been breeding out there. Uh, they're actually uh, higher bred now than camels in Saudi Arabia, so they actually sell them back to Saudi Arabia. The problem is that when the male camels are in heat, if you have a female camel, they will kill you to get to your camel. The way that camels actually kill you is uh, their necks are so strong they can lift 15 grown men, so they'll actually knock you over with their neck and sit on you and suffocate you. Robin was told that if she saw any wild camels like this running towards her, towards her female, that the, all she could do is, is actually shoot which, whichever camel was the, the lead and hopefully it would scare the other camels. So during the trip, she was actually attacked by one pack of wild camels and uh, as much as she loved the animals, she had to kill one of them. Another really important danger, a major danger to Robin is that on the map, she would come up to an area with, where she would show an intersection in the middle of nowhere and the roads look like this and on the map it would show one road going to the left and one road going to the right and it would say if you take the road to the right you'll end up finding a well but when she would get to some of these intersections she'd actually see five paths going off and the question was which one led to the well and which one was a two-week dead end uh, where you'd come up against the cattle fence and you'd have to turn around and go back and by then you may have run out of water so there was no GPS back there this is called the gun barrel highway and less than six cars a year go through this sort of thousand mile stretch of no man's land. So one of the biggest dangers is that she would simply take the wrong, the wrong path and die out there. People have always asked me what Robin lived on out there because obviously she couldn't carry enough food for nine months. Um, she shot wild kangaroos and rabbits. She had some tin goods, but um, the Aborigines taught her about some of the animals and plants and, and insects that they lived on. These are actually called witchetty grubs. They're, they live inside of plants. They're really disgusting. Um, I actually ate one once. Uh, you fry them, and uh, basically it's, it's eating worms that are crispy on the outside and gooey on the inside. <laughs> the Aborigines talk about the fact that these um, witchetty grubs are very high in vitamin C, so they're actually very healthy, but I have to say uh, one taste of them was enough for me. There were several times during the trip that Robin didn't run out of water, and particularly towards the end of the trip when she passed through some cattle stations. Some cattle stations in Australia are as large as states are in the United States, but um, some of these cattle stations have basically overstocked their, uh, their land, and they're also in the middle of a terrible drought. So she would get to some of these cattle stations that were, parts of them were deserted and find nothing but, but, but basically rotting carcasses of animals. And so she was desperate to find water for herself and for her animals. This was a, basically a theme that happened throughout the trip where she was desperately trying to find wells that were safe for her to drink to keep herself and her animals alive. I'd really appreciate your help in backing this Kickstarter campaign. I want to create a beautiful coffee table book which combines pictures from Robin's original camel trip with extraordinary images from the movie. Please back the campaign and please click on the button on your left.